and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now one of the most common questions I get asked is what to do about pest snails. And I think the most important thing is to understand what kind of pest snail you have. There are five or six that are really common, especially if you're into planted aquariums. So I've gathered all of them together into my little hanging specimen container and we're going to take a closer look for ID. Now, in my mind, pest snails are not a particularly big problem. I find them to be an exceptional barometer of your tank health. The reality is that they can't really mass produce unless they have a readily available food source. Now, this food source can be hard for us to identify. It could be algae, which we can usually see. It can be excess of mulm in your substrate. It can be unhealthy plants um, or overfeeding your fish, an excess of fish food laying around that they can eat. At which time, the vast majority of them can asexually reproduce. They'll lay a lot of eggs, the eggs hatch, the babies hit maturity quickly, and the cycle spirals out of control. So there's a few things that you can do. One is to manually remove any snails you see. You can squish them and feed them to your fish, but remember this is also adding a food source for the other snails. You can just remove them and freeze them or squish them before throwing them away. You can add something like a bosha loach. There's tons of species that will eat snails, but it's important to remember that a lot of them are not particularly suitable for smaller size tanks and a lot of them have aggressive tendencies so they're not always the best community fish. That's sort of like putting a, on a band-aid when you need stitches. So it's not my preference. Um, you can also collect snails and feed them to something like dwarf puffers which can be great in a little tank but again this would mean pulling the snails from your display which I think is probably the best method simply because as you remove the snails you're removing the ones that are able to lay eggs so you'll see results very quickly. It takes a while, a duration of being persistent at manual removal but it's really the best bet. Um, the other thing that you can do is make a trap and bait the trap and then remove the snails that way. And all you do to make that is get a typical water bottle. You're going to cut it right where the flange ends. I just use a razor blade because I have them laying around for cleaning glass. Take off the lid. Invert it. It'll fit in there. And you have a snail trap. Now, I don't bother siliconing or taping or anything this. I just grab, in this case, some leftover salad, which is cucumber, carrot, and lettuce. Throw it in the bottom. Put the lid in. The snails will climb in through the hole. They'll, make, they'll numb on all this stuff. And I usually drop this in when the lights are out, come back an hour or two later, or even first thing in the morning, pull it out, and it's full of snails. And I'll show you that, too. I'm going to drop it into my 150 because I seem to have a bit of a problem of pest snails in there probably because I can't vacuum behind and underneath the big piles of rocks. Uh, another alternative would be to add assassin snails, but as I talked about in their species profile, they do breed readily, so you're replacing one problem with another, and it also limits your stocking choices as far as ornamental snails in the future. So I'm going to drop this into 150, and then we're going to take a closer look at the various types of pest snails that are commonly seen in the hobby. Now, in this little specimen container, I've dropped uh, five types of common pest snails in order to show you the difference both in size, shape, and color, as well as discuss some of the pros and cons of each type. Now, over here, we have Malaysian trumpet, which is this long conical one. And they are probably one of the most debated pest snails in the hobby. They have a few purposes. They do burrow into the sand, so they can stir that top layer. Um, the problem is, is that they reproduce at a very small size and very readily. They tend to be heavily nocturnal, so you don't think you have many, but if you come down after lights out, you will see tons of them. And these are the ones that are best known for clogging up 
uh, intake strainers, getting into impellers, and causing those sorts of general problems. Now, I gift a lot of these to hobbyists all the time, especially those that have the sand substrate. I had a very difficult time getting them established in my fish room because my maintenance routine is so high and I use such a little amount of substrate. That guy in the back, those are miniature ram's horn snails. Their Latin name is Planorbis arnaldi. And they are obviously super teeny. They don't get a whole lot bigger than that. And they look sort of similar to other ram's horns, except for they're very flat in appearance, and their shell tends to lay over sideways. Now, I don't find them to be very problematic, and again, I had a difficult time getting them established, but they're excellent at eating the algae on the glass, and in my experience, not particularly fast to reproduce. Your standard ram's horn are these guys and they can come in a range of colors some of which are quite attractive there's orange there's pink there's blue there's leopard there's brown and they're planorbis rubrum and they're probably my favorite pet snail simply because they're the most ornamental and attractive they do breed readily but they're very easy to pick out and control their populations they don't seem to harm plants readily at least not healthy ones and i find them to be a kind of an interesting addition now, the biggest confusion comes between bladder snails and pond snails. I have both of them in this container, and there's a pretty simple way to tell them apart. On the back wall there, on the back wall there is a bladder snail. Now, this is the one that is the most common in the hobby and the biggest pain in the butt. You can see they have those long, sort of stringy antenna. And people often call them pond snails, but they're not. They are bladder snails. They're a physis species. They're extremely fast to reproduce. They're extremely fast to reproduce. They're generally that mottled brown color. And they can be a real pest and difficult to eradicate. They lay tons of eggs all over plants, um, on the substrate, and inside decor. That's another ram's horn, the full size beside it. That's a brown one. You see the other one had that orange face. And then we have what I call the true pond snail or the donkey ear pond snail. They're also called the greater pond snail and they're an entirely different genus. They're Limnia stagnalis and they get quite large. They're definitely the largest of the pest snails and they're also very, very slow to reproduce. And they happen to be one of my favorites. They have almost an iridescent sheen, an opalescence to their body um, and their shell. And they get quite large, about the size of hmm, maybe a nickel, maybe slightly larger. They're relatively long lived and again, very slow breeding and they're excellent at eating algaes and decaying plant matter. They do not tend to eat healthy plant matter. They're not that common in the hobby though. Um, but all in all, they're, they're a pretty nice addition and really the best barometer of tank health. In the foreground here, we have the pond snail, a ram's horn, a Malaysian trumpet. There are two types of Malaysian trumpets. One is brown and one is like a cream color with red speckles. They behave identically. Again, over here is an adult ram's horn. There's one of those mini ram's horns for scale. You can see how tiny they are. You can see how tiny they are and how their shell sort of goes out to the side rather than upright on their back. And that's the most distinguishing characteristic with them uh, to differentiate between them and normal ram's horns. All in all, I find pest snails to serve a purpose in my aquariums. And if they ever get to numbers that are too high, I, need, I know that I need to either cut back on my feeding, increase my maintenance, or really look into the health of my plants because something is out of whack. Hope that helps. Since I oriented the bottle vertically, I'm not catching fish. And in about 15 minutes, I've caught about 25 or 30 snails. I'm going to leave this in here till tomorrow morning. And I'll update you guys later on my Facebook page. 
for watching. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips or my Sunday species spotlights. Also, make sure you stop by my Facebook and visit my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Now, this upcoming weekend, I'm going to be in Louisville, Kentucky for the Tropical Fish Fanciers on Sunday. I do have information about that on my Facebook page as well as my website on the events section. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know below.